I've been a photography enthusiast for about three years, and since then, I've never gotten tired of discovering the realm of photography. For me, photography is more than just taking pictures with a device. It is a form of art, a medium for creativity where I am given the chance to capture moments, stories, and emotions. Now, stepping into the field of photography opens up to me a lot of new skills to learn. I remember learning about the exposure triangle when I first started out. As I progressed, I had to learn about composition, the use of different cameras, post-processing, the list goes on. However, there's this one particular thing that never fails to fascinate me, but also constantly challenges me throughout my journey, and that is the use of lenses. On my hand right now is my favorite camera, also the first film camera that I bought about a year ago. So this is a Pentax camera, and this little thing has been my partner in crime. However, what I want to show you guys are the two lenses that I use with this camera body. This one right here is the Pentax M28 millimeter lens, also called the wide angle lens. And this one right here is the Pentax M50 millimeter lens. Now I know from far away they might look identical, but how they work is actually very different. And to prove that, I want to show you guys two pictures that I took with these two lenses, but with the same Pentax camera body. So the picture that I took on my right-hand side right here is the picture that I took in Milan with the 28 millimeter lens, the wide angle lens. And the picture on my left-hand side is a picture of my beautiful friend that I took with the 50 millimeter lens. So let's do some comparison, shall we? So in this first picture, if you can look closely um, where I used the 28 millimeter lens, you can see that the details in this picture, including the details of the buildings, the people from far to near, are captured quite sharply. And that is because I chose to use the 28 millimeter lens. Because of its wide aperture, I was able to capture this exquisite scenery in front of my eyes in details. In this second picture, where I used the 50 millimeter lens, you can see that only my friend and the flower that she was holding are sharp. However, the background is quite blurred. Let's say if we use the 28 millimeter lens here, what would happen? The outcome will be that the background, including the details of the tree, will also appear sharper, which was not what I wanted. I wanted to put more emphasis on my friend and the flowers that she was holding. You see, I used the same camera body with two different lenses, and the outcomes are different. Each lens has its own beauty, and I, as the photographer, have the power to choose which lens to use. Each lens puts me under different perspectives, and I, my job, is to observe the beauty of each perspective. One of the most valuable things that photography taught me throughout the years is the power of observing under different perspectives, and that is why, as I stand here today, I do not hesitate to share about this topic and how observations and perspectives have changed my life. Pretty sure some of us have seen this image somewhere before. So this image was actually created by a Brazilian cartoonist named Junido Ranchi in 2013. Now, ever since then, it has been used in countless meme pictures on the internet, like this version. However, the artist actually wanted to portray a powerful message shown in the original version right here. Now, I'm not going to attempt to read this because I clearly can't speak Spanish, but the English, English translation to this is choose the happy side of life. Two guys sitting on the same bus, but they chose to sit on different sides of the bus. That guy right there in the purple shirt He's looking quite sad, and his view is a rock wall. On the other hand, that guy in the yellow shirt is looking quite happy with a big smile, and his view is that wonderful view outside. I really like this image because it really reflects 
how us as individuals have the power to choose our perspective on life. Two people might be going through the same situation, but how they react to it can be totally different because how they perceive the situation is different. Let me give you another example. So I was on my way to school today, and for some reason, I just love the weather. You know, white clouds, blue sky, birds chirpy. Everything felt like a dream. However, it wasn't the same last week. I received a low score on a test, and I can remember clearly on the next day when I was on my way to school, I hated the weather. I was constantly annoyed by how hot it was, and the only thing that was in my head is how it would be so much better if it rained that day. But the key thing to consider here is that the weather today and the weather last week is not that different. So this really got me thinking: Is it the weather that affects how I feel, or is it my own feelings and thoughts and emotions that affect the way I observe the world around me? There's this correlation between our inner world and the outer world that a lot of us don't realize. How we think and how we feel affect the way we observe the world around us, and that outer world will continuously reflect whatever. That is inside of you. We are so often caught up by things around us that sometimes our emotions remain unrecognized or even unidentified. By observing the world around you, not only that you will understand that world, but you understand yourself. Just like how I was extremely uncomfortable with, uncomfortable with the weather last week, by realizing how annoyed I was, I knew for a fact. That there was something negative inside of me, and there they were: feelings of disappointment, anger, and embarrassment because of the low score that I got. This also applies to the way we react to other people around us. By observing how you react to other people, really reflects how you think about yourself. I had this friend in ninth grade, and I remember disliking him a lot. I was so irritated by the things that he did in class because he barely paid attention. And the reason behind this is that he was focusing on his music career. Back then, I thought what I felt about him was purely because he was a weirdo, or I even thought that he was lazy because he didn't focus on his academic journey. But that changed one day. I can't remember exactly what happened that made us talk to each other, but I realized one thing that changed my mindset until now. I realized how jealous I was towards him. You see, he had a passion, he had a dream, he had a goal, and he was so hardworking in order to pursue that passion. When I was in ninth grade, I didn't know what I want to do. I don't have a dream. I didn't have a passion. I didn't know what I want to pursue. Looking at him, I was so full of jealousy and envy, and that is why I only chose to look at his bad sides in order to make me feel better about myself. But the way I, the way that I viewed him, was not because he was a weirdo, but it is because of my own feelings and emotions. I was insecure. From a weirdo in my mind, he turned into one of the people that inspired me the most to step out of my bubble and do and find what I love to do. My friend remained the same, but my image of him changed, and that is because I changed my own perspective on him. It felt just like when I altered my camera lens because the way I view him is now completely different. And I came to a realization. It is that things are not what they are. Things are what you think they are. Things are rarely as they seem. As I discovered this for myself, I started to dig in deeper and find out more about the relationship between our inner world and the outer world, and how this might help us change the way we view certain things. 
I found out that our inner world, including our thoughts, emotions, and feelings, are affected by family backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, social status, gender, race, age, and a host of other factors. This is referred to as subjective experience. To make it easier to understand, imagine yourself putting on different pairs of glasses to look at the world around you. All of us have very different pairs of glasses, and your subjective experience is unique because we all have different pairs of glasses inside of our mind. This bends our ways of thinking and feeling, forming a sense of bias. This is not always healthy, though, because the assumptions made inside our brain can hinder our ability to grow our mindset and reinvent ourselves into a more open-minded person. Shifting perspectives will help us navigate any situation with a more balanced look. Understanding how important this is, I started to do my research and find out ways that I can change my perspective under certain circumstances. So let's take a particular example. I'm arguing with my friend because she acted, accidentally dropped my favorite cup. It's now broken. Okay, first step, I observe myself. Remember, observe is not just to see. It is to watch carefully in order to realize and learn something. How am I feeling? What are my thoughts? Well, I look angry. I'm yelling. I'm fighting. And that is because I'm angry. I'm sad and I'm hopeless and I'm frustrated because my favorite cup is now broken. Okay, so that's my perspective. Let's all become my friend. Let's all become actors. What will we think if we are her in that situation? Can anybody just shout out any emotion? Guilty. <laughs> You're right. Well, I can't be sure, but I think she's feeling guilty because it was an accident. She, she's trying to prove herself. She's trying to defend herself, and that is why she's fighting with me. She's arguing with me. So that is the process of me putting myself into her shoes. Okay, but how about we put all of this mess into a painting? Now, I'm an outsider. I'm not related to these two per people. What am I thinking when I look at this? Well, I think, okay, so there's a broken cup and two people are fighting with each other. But is the broken cup really the reason why these people are arguing with each other? Well, I think it's not worth it. It seems like just a normal cup. Why are they arguing with each other? They could potentially ruin this relationship, you know? Right now, I'm in the third person point of view. I'm in the distance or detached perspective, and I'm disengaged from the self-immersed vantage point in order to see a bigger picture. This whole story becomes different. This process is called reappraisal. So reappraisal is a commonly used and widely used um, regulation, um, emotion regulation method that involves reframing the meaning of a situation in order to alter its emotional impact, as described in this research by James Gross in 1998. Reappraisal describes the process of you taking a step back and view any situation in a more objective way. And in order to have an objective perspective, you must observe any situation or event under different perspectives in order to make fair judgments. Making observations and shifting perspectives will help you grasp aspects that your limited perspective or your ego might not be able to comprehend otherwise. I chose to talk about this topic today. Because as a Gen Z experiencing fast changes of our planet, I find it challenging to slow down 
and observe my own life under different points of view, especially with the use of social media. Scrolling endlessly through Instagram, Facebook, we are taking time away from ourselves to be able to observe, to understand, to deep think, and to reflect. With platforms like TikTok or Instagram Reels, we're forgetting to realize or understand our own thoughts and emotions towards fast-moving videos. We're constantly on our phone, and we're caught up in the autopilot mode. Researchers at Stanford found out that Twitter users are way more influenced by strong emotions expressed by the people in their social network compared to weaker and calmer ones after they analyzed 19 million Twitter posts. Our world is changing faster and faster, and so is our inner world. Our perceptions, our thoughts, emotions are changing faster. This is challenging our own self-awareness journey. Therefore, we must all observe, we must all understand our inner world and the outer world, and always view situations and events around you under different perspectives. When you change your mind, you change your world. My name is V, and I'm here today to tell you that this is your first step into becoming a global citizen. Thank you.